welcome to the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Charlotte. And I'm Paula. And today we're talking about how we've changed expert social, why we've changed it, but ultimately how you can apply it to your own business for things that maybe need tweaking that you kind of been putting on the back burner. As the co-founders of the Landscaper Circle, we help you get more money, time and freedom to become limitless through our experiences as fellow landscapers and our tried and tested methods. If you want help with your marketing, managing or growing your business, you've definitely come to the right place. If you're a landscaper, garden designer or supplier to the industry, then hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. So in case you don't know, Expert Social was a membership. So a separate membership from the Landscaper Circle, whereby you could access customizable captions, customizable image templates and customizable story templates every month. So you'd get basically your social media content plan done. You'd get your captions written for you. You just needed to amend them slightly. And I'd also tell you what images to use. So basically you're getting a nice between DIY completely and done for you social media management, which obviously costs a fair bit more. You're getting me on your business without the price tag. We had launched this in March, I believe, yeah. and we had some success with it, but often we found that people really loved the content, but didn't want another subscription, didn't want another membership. It was more the hesitation to sign up for something, even though we had no contract or no tie-ins for certain months, that was the the concern of many people. Um, but those that have joined really loved it, but also didn't want that monthly outgoing expense. So I had been thinking for probably the last month, well, why don't we then offer it rather than as a separate membership, I create two more months to create six months. We reframe them as bundles because they'll be on a PDF with the action plan video, the captions, the templates, and the graphics. And we sell them through TLC's online shop. Now, currently on the online shop, we've got masterclasses, we've got our daily and weekly planners, and we've got some done for you services. So it wouldn't be alien to it, I guess. No, I think the, the key here is why did we do it? And how yeah. does this apply to you guys? Because ultimately Charlotte was struggling with the decision right up until last week. Yeah, I said to Paula, I've been thinking about this and what do you think? And I think... For me and for you guys, you may have that something similar in your business where I knew it was the right decision because ultimately more people would probably benefit from it and invest in it because it's just a one-off purchase versus a monthly subscription. They could buy it in installments, buy the whole six months up front. And then it also meant that we could move up to TLC and stop marketing it as a separate thing. So redirect the website to a page on the Landscaper Circle website, you know, create a social media post that says to head over to the Landscaper Circle and reduce the need to post three times a week on the expert social. So I knew it was the right decision, but I had the fear of being like, well, what would it look like to everyone else? Would it look like a failure? Which it wasn't. And... It's the fear of, well, I've committed to it, so I've got to stick with it. And I think we can often fall in that trap. Oh, all the time. And I think this is the problem that you can also find in your business. You'll be going along a certain way with a certain product or service and it's not working, but you're too hesitant to worry, well, what will others think? That's one thing. And the second thing is you're too scared that if you stop now, what might have been? Mm. And I think we can all feel like that in whatever business you're in mm. but often the problem is when you're looking to outside what they will think of you and I know that was Charlotte's a massive part of why she hadn't done it sooner I fully supported her in changing it and for me in completely selfish reasons Charlotte can, then can spend more time on TLC rather than trying to split her time between expert social and TLC mm. so we can move it under one it reduces workload it reduces stress it reduces the pressure on Charlotte to get content done every single month because we did change that in the TLC membership as yeah. well and we did that for similar reasons not to overwhelm people and ourselves at the same time and also make it better for our members so again this is making it better for people that want this help but don't want a subscription they can buy one off so it works but it's kind of getting your mindset around that it's not a failure because people mm. like it enjoy it have paid for it however it's getting over the fact that who cares what it comes across to other people really 
Yeah, and I think the other thing for me as well, I really loved our website, which is a very sad thing to say, but I put a work into that website and I loved it. And I was basically transferring the content to the TLC site yesterday. And I was like, it's okay. Like, I'm not sad about it because it's still going to exist. It's still going to help a lot of people that can purchase it through the shop. But as you say, it's that transition. And I think a good example that probably you could give for um, the guys listening is artificial grass. Oh yeah. So back in 2016, we made the decision to stop installing artificial grass. Now there was multitude of reasons why. I mean, we started off an artificial grass arm probably a year or two prior to that. It might only have been a year actually. And we did the, the typical thing. We created a website lead page for it, didn't yeah. we? Cause I know Charlotte and Becky in the office were doing that. We wrapped a van. Mm -hmm. We had two artificial grass teams installing for us, just purely artificial grass. Yes, they could jump on to the landscaping if, as and when we needed it, but their main job was artificial grass. We had a separate appointment diary just for artificial grass appointments, and we had separate figures. So we had to get X amount of inquiries in, sales, etc. So we ran it almost separately, but alongside the landscaping business. And initially it was great. We, we had a boom of inquiries. I think it was at the time where it was becoming really, really popular. Mm. We went and visited the grass factory by the manufacturer that we'd chosen and, and found out how it was made, et cetera, et cetera. So I was really comfortable with how it was going however in 2016 I realized that one we weren't making any money from this side venture two we had loads of issues with installation so not only was it a couple of the lads that worked for us wasn't installing correctly but also we had issues with the product itself I think you've probably seen on social media not just through us but other people have, have promoted the fact that artificial grass can get really really hot in summer and can be quite dangerous for kids and animals so if you've got pets or children or grandchildren coming over you might not actually be able to use that lovely looking lawn that you've just had installed so in 2016 we made the decision to close that entire arm of the business and just focus back on aura landscapes now i battled with the same issues as charlotte feeling like it was a failure it didn't help that this all coincided when i had to basically claw back the business and make people redundant mm. so it was happening at a really bad time so of course i was thinking the whole thing i'm a failure everything's not working it's all going wrong we might lose the whole business so it was quite a scary time but ultimately I feel now that I made the absolutely right decision because it wasn't our lane. It wasn't our focus. It wasn't our zone of genius, so to speak. It was something that we did because we were getting lots of inquiries for it. The market drove us to, to that yeah. point. We also had good relationships with one of the manufacturers. So we were driven through them as well to install more, but the problem was it's not a great product. I mean, I, I don't like artificial grass. I've chosen to have a natural lawn in my own garden and we do not install artificial grass at all now. If it's part of a bigger project, we don't like to. We try and tell the customers to go for a, a proper lawn because again, if you listen to the podcast with Capability Charlotte and myself, for many reasons, I don't feel artificial grass is the right choice for many reasons, not just the dangers of when it gets hot, also, it can smell if you've got pets and quite the amount of cleaning. It's not no maintenance no. either. So there's lots of different reasons. But ultimately, making that decision was really hard. I went through the same things, like worrying what other people would think of me. But I'm glad I did, because otherwise it could be a very different story now. If I'd carried on going, ignoring the issues, ignoring the problems, and just thought, no, I can't do it because people will think I'm a failure. Yeah, and I think often people may not even realise, to be fair, it's just us in our own heads and I think the way you can apply it to your business is there a service or is there an element of your business or a piece of marketing that you're putting out that you're really like do you know what it's not working how it is or it's okay but it needs improving and I've got this idea but you know I don't know because of how people are going to think bite the bullet is what I'd say because I'm very happy with the decision I made but you often overthink and ponder things and overthinking is my chief skill <laughs> I'm very very good at that one so just have a think and apply it to your own business I'm very happy with the decision if you are interested in expert social it will be available on the TLC shop very soon um, so you can grab your hands on that content 
but that was kind of our way of taking back control and even with scaling back things a certain side of the business you can often view that as a failure but no one really knows and even if they did who cares because you're making actually a plan for longevity rather than short term yeah and i think another thing to think about is <clears throat> what do you actually want out of your business and your life because if something is taking so much time that you're actually spending less time at home more time maybe on the tools more time doing that extra service that you you thought would be a good idea but actually you're thinking mm, probably not now just have a think like how do you want your life to be because if you want to be overwhelmed and stressed out all the time carry on but if not then get rid of it mm. don't worry about it. don't do not hesitate if you're questioning something in your business there's there's something most likely to be wrong there yeah so it's either fixing it or getting rid of it and just moving on with something else and if you're someone that's been looking for a sign mm. this is a sign to refine back and focus on what you're passionate about because when you do truly focus on what you're passionate about not to say that i wasn't passionate about expert social because i am it's one of it's my baby um but when you truly refine it and focus on what you're passionate about that's when the business grows that's when you get the success that you're looking for or the lifestyle that you're looking for and you truly are motivated to go to work to do all the things and make really good decisions in your business from a place of free thinking rather than overwhelm yeah and also where your focus goes the business grows so essentially whatever you're focusing on is going to improve is going to grow is going to develop if you are flitting between too many things and it's particularly if you've only got a small team around you it can often take your eye off the big bigger bigger thing that you want mm. to focus on and grow so just i mean this is this is a call to action reflect yeah have a reflect on where you are i mean even take our quiz because that yes. will help you reflect and see where you are and it might actually help you see you know where you're looking to go and make you start thinking about what you want to really do and what you want the business to truly look like. We've done this recently, as you'll have heard in a, a previous podcast, and it's really about taking back control of your focus and your attention and seeing where you want to place it, seeing where you yeah. want the business to develop and grow. And I think that's another good example of where we've done what we've said on the tin in this podcast because we have a lot of free resources at the landscapers circle and they all offer a tremendous amount of value and the feedback we were having is that they're all amazing but there's too much and they don't know which applies to them so this report says where you are now based on what you filled in in the quiz where you want to be and then how you're going to get there providing you with tlc resources that are specific to what you put in to help you on your way. So again, that was us going, we offer all of these three things and we promote on social. Now we're going to refine it right back and really focus on this because it's something we've pulled all our knowledge expertise in and they're going to get really good value from. Yep. So have a think. Yeah. Link will be in the show notes and we'll see you on the next one.